Uh, Tom Waddle, former Bears wide receiver, co-host of Waddle and Sylvie on ESPN 1000 in Chicago. And Tom joins us now. How is morale in Chicago, Tom? Very low. It sucks. Like we were on the air, Dan. It, it was, I think it was four o'clock central time when the news came. I laughed. I mean, I think it was full belly laugh and it was one of those kind of nervous, but uh, hey, I expected this effing decision to happen. Uh, but yeah, we got it. We had two hours of people hot as the day is long that just they could. I can't understand it myself. So I understood why why they were upset. All right. Take me back to when Russell's agent through Adam Schefter says, here's the four teams. If uh, Seattle happens to trade us, what was that day like in, in uh, Chicago when you realized you were on the wish list? Well, my first my first response was, why? Like, <laughs> why are we on that list? Like whatever risk, uh, whatever Russ is upset with in Seattle, there's not enough around him. They don't protect him well enough. Whatever the complaint was, it was like, Russ, that ain't going to get any better here in Chicago. Have you watched Bears football lately? Uh, but no, I mean, there was a, an enormous sugar high for sure that I don't know if you know this, Dan, <clears throat> but we're kind of in a quarterback drought here in Chicago. It's lasted several <laughs> decades, but – like when, when Russell Wilson, one of the top five quarterbacks in the league over the last decade, puts you on his wish list, like this city didn't know how to respond. Like, like I'm a realist in a lot of ways, um, kind of shaped by my childhood and my inability to run fast or do anything athletic. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had a pretty low expectation level for things. But even I was kind of intrigued and hopeful Thought it was a long shot, but when Russ puts us on his list, I think everyone in this town had the thought that finally our, our long wanted and needed franchise quarterback was about to be delivered to us. But is there part of you that wishes that he didn't put Chicago on that list? Uh, to raise expectations and then to be, to be cut off at the knees. Yeah. I think you could make that statement. Look, like I said, my childhood was, was, was was really kind of affected when I think it was like seven or eight years old I grew up in Cincinnati and all I wanted for Christmas one year was an Archie Griffin jersey I think I got a super toe and super toes are cool but I wanted an Archie Griffin jersey <laughs> and honestly from that point forward I think I kind of just I've been a person that set the bar at a very reasonable level and when Russ puts us on the list it was like going back to that Christmas morning thinking I'm getting an Archie Griffin jersey and I get a super toe like <laughs> <laughs> no offense to Andy Dalton. He's had a nice career. He's been to the postseason five times. He's had three trips to the Super Bowl, but or Super or, or Pro Bowl, but that's a Super Bowl. So, um, look, yeah, I think you can make the case that that it, it, it raised expectation levels to a, a, a lofty spot. That really, in a lot of ways, you know, we probably, if we looked at it a little closer, weren't weren't reasonable. Um, I don't know, though, kind of if I circle back, like every now and again, it's fun to dream, especially where we've been with the quarterback position. So now I'm going to reverse my, my answer and say, no, I'm glad he put us on his list. Would you rather have Mitchell Trubisky or Andy Dalton? At this point, I'd rather have Andy Dalton. And, and look, I, my rationale is that the coach lost complete confidence in the quarterback a while ago I don't even know if Matt ever had confidence in Mitch like Mitch was drafted in 2017 and we're not going to relitigate what Ryan Pace did wrong there it's quite obvious um but I thought that 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 Matt never showed that he truly trusted Mitch I don't think he felt Mitch fit his system and I think that was on full display especially at the end of last year Nick Foles gets hurt Mitch comes back they totally tailor the offense to to Mitch's strengths um they kind of scaled things back. They cut the field in half. And it's what Matt should have done. I mean, I think Matt deserves some of the criticism for Mitch's lack of consistent performance. But ultimately, he's a professional quarterback. And quite frankly, I just don't think he was he was good enough. But the moral of the story really for me is, is that if you watch how plays were called against the Saints in the postseason and the Green Bay Packers in the final game of the season, like we could sit around and talk about how that offense was clicking and scoring 40 against a bad Texans defense or a bad Jags defense. But the truth is, is when you step up in class and you've modified your offense and you don't trust your quarterback to do anything, you're not going to beat the better team. So like Matt lost faith in Mitch. And once that happens, you got to move on. And I think the Rams are the best example of that. Sean McVay 
lost faith in, in Jared Goff as their quarterback. And what did Sean McVay do? He decided, look, we appreciate your participation and the effort, all that you did for us, but this isn't going to work. And he traded for Matthew Stafford. So that to me is kind of the best example that, that, that kind of defines my point for this. So, I, you know, Mitchell being in the league for a decade, great kid, hard worker, teammates like him, struggles in my mind to play the position from the pocket. And like, I just think Matt couldn't coexist with him any longer, not because he didn't like him as a kid, but because he didn't trust him. Are the Bears out of the quarterback market? I think what, what I was told by this this signing basically was is they, they, they swung and missed with Russ. They tried to complete the Hail Mary. It was incomplete. Um, I think they're going to try to move up in the first round and grab one of these guys. They were in North Dakota looking at Trey Lance. I think they'll try to find a way to get one of these quarterbacks um, and then kind of reset the clock for both Ryan Pace and, and, and Matt running this program here in Chicago. Um, look, I, I, I think Ryan Pace is, is – it's in his DNA to, to, to think big. So does it mean he's still not going to try to make a trade for someone? Probably not. But at this point, like I was an advocate, if you can't get Russ and you can't get Watson and Watson really was never an option. And Russ, I thought was a long shot. My, my advice to them had they called me, which they don't would have been to just do nothing. You've got Andy Dalton on your roster. It's Nick Foles. Like it's a bridge to nowhere. It's a bridge to mediocrity. It's a bridge to eight and eight. So why not save the $10 million and, and try to fill some holes in other areas and try to fix your team in different ways? Keep your, keep your powder dry and keep your draft picks. That's what I would have advised them to do. So I thought it was really an unnecessary decision to sign Andy, but I wouldn't rule out Ryan still going to the plate and trying to swing and, and hit the ball out. Keep your head up, okay? I can't. Why not? I'm, I mean, listen – this is living in this town. This team's in my blood. Like you've got your Jersey. It's got your face on it. I got a Jersey that stills, despite what they've done at the quarterback position. Mine says Chicago bears. They're in my heart. They're in my blood, Dan. And when, when you can't get the quarterback position right over the course of 90 years, it stings. Could you ever see Jim Harbaugh coaching the bears? If there was a coaching change, I, I, like, that's a really tough question for me to answer, to be honest with you, because I have such a great, feeling in my body for Jim and who he was like, there aren't many guys in the league back in the early nineties and late eighties that would have trusted me and thrown the ball to me. And, and Jim did. Um, and he was such a great competitor on the field. And, and I loved him as in, in the way he approached the game. Um, with that said, like and his NFL resume is great. If you go back and look what he did in, in San Francisco, but like what has struck, what have they struggled with in Michigan to find the quarterback? <laughs> what, I mean, like, what are we doing here in Chicago? We're trying to find a quarterback. Like, forget I brought I it up. Tom. Like, forget I brought it up. Forget. Yeah. It. yeah. I mean, like it's my like, bad it makes me feel bad. Like, <laughs> I mean, keep kicking me, Dan. My bad. My bad. Hey, spring training. White Sox going to be good this year. Yeah, and actually, they're on our on our station, the ESPN yeah. 1000. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So I got that to look forward to. Yeah. I'd start drinking early on St. Patty's Day. Oh, Dan, it's, it's a day that ends in a Y. I'm going to have one as soon as we're done. <laughs> Thank you, bud. Good to talk to you. Tell Sylvie Good. we said hello. I will. Thanks, Dan. That's Tom Otto.